We would like to acknowledge this traditional ancestral territory of San Ildefonso, Santa Clara, Cochiti, Zuni, Santo Domingo, and San Felipe Pueblo tribes in which we learned, worked, and filmed this video. Since arriving in this area almost a thousand years ago, the Pueblo people have lived in community with the indigenous plants and animals of this area. Those of us who have come to this area since then moved into a rich ecological community of people and wildlife, and we continue to share our home with the subject of today's video, birds. Have you seen birds flying around near your house? Have you noticed that some birds, like hummingbirds, only seem to be around during the summer? Do you ever wonder where they go when they're not in your neighborhood? Join us as we learn more about our flying feathered neighbors through bird banding. This is one of our volunteer bird banders, Bob, with a cooper's hawk we caught this season. Bob is an avid birder and looks for exciting species all over the world. He became a part of Bandelier National Monument's banding crew after he volunteered with the school groups who come to visit our site. Do you see the band on the hawk's leg? We put that band on it after we caught the hawk in our net. Each metal band has a unique nine-digit code etched into it. If someone captures this hawk again in the future, they'll be able to look up the number through the National Bird Banding Lab and find out when and where it was banded, along with the measurements and observations that we made. This is how banding works. If we recapture a banded bird, we can find out things like how far it has traveled and how it has grown since the last time it was captured. By banding thousands of birds all over the world, and by hopefully recapturing some of them, we can start to get a picture of what birds are where, how well they're surviving, and how populations are changing in different places. Many species of bird have two homes, their summer home and their winter home. In the spring, they fly north to their cooler summer homes where they will hopefully eat, find a mate, and have some babies, or offspring. This summer home is called their breeding ground. Come fall, as the weather turns cooler, they will leave their summer home flying south to their winter home, or non-breeding ground. Many birds find their summer homes in New Mexico, maybe even in your backyard, but their winter homes are all the way down in Mexico or even South America. Migrating birds need healthy habitats, both in their summer and winter homes, and in places where they stop for food, water, and shelter along the way. Part of our job is to collect the data that may help to determine how this habitat here in Bandelier National Monument is faring. How are our species doing in their summer breeding and fall migrating compared to birds in similar habitats in other areas? It can take decades of banding data to answer these kinds of questions. One bright, charismatic example of a common migrant is the Wilson's Warbler. Starting in mid-August, we in Bandelier begin to capture more and more of this species as they begin to migrate south. Here is a map showing their breeding grounds in the north and their non-breeding grounds in Central America. All of that yellow space in between shows where these tiny birds fly through during their migration. Keep an eye out for these quick, colorful birds as they pass through New Mexico. Now that we have some of the scientific background for bird banding, let's talk about the banding process itself. First of all, our number one priority every day at our station is bird safety. Anyone who is allowed to handle or process the birds is extensively trained in how to do so. Birds can be extremely small and delicate, susceptible to chilly mornings or hot sunny afternoons. As banders, we are always conscious of how the bird is doing, and we only proceed with our data collection when we know that the bird can handle it. We start out our morning just before sunrise. In order to catch birds, we set up tall, lightweight nets called mist nets. The nets are so fine and difficult to see that flying birds can't see them until it's too late. The nets have shelves built in that hold and trap birds after they've flown in. We check the nets regularly, for captured birds, and when we find one, we carefully disentangle it and place it into a soft cloth bag. We keep these bags safe and comfortable until we are ready to process each bird. After removing a bird from its bag, our first step is to measure its leg for the correct band size. Once chosen, we take the next sequential bird band, take note 
of its numbers and then place the band on the bird's leg with a special pair of banding pliers. The bander then takes all the required measurements. They blow away the feathers on the belly, sides, and back of the bird to look for reproductive indicators for fat levels and to see if and where the bird is molting feathers. Here's an example of a brood patch. A female bird will drop all of the feathers from her chest so that she can more directly use the warmth of her blood to keep her offspring warm. We can often use this brood patch to figure out the sex of our birds and to guess when they laid their eggs. Birds have fairly predictable cycles of molting away old, worn feathers to make way for new, fresh ones. Feather molt patterns can often help us figure out how old our birds are. The amount of wear and tear on the outer flight feathers of the wing can also help with this. The bender will then measure the length of the wing and the length of the tail. Next, the bander will take the weight of the bird by placing it in an appropriately sized tube on a scale. Some of our smallest birds, such as kinglets, weigh as little as 6 or 7 grams. That is about as much as a penny and a nickel in the palm of your hand. Lastly, the bander releases the bird who flies away with its shiny new piece of jewelry on its leg. Here are bandolier banders Keegan and Bob. Let's watch and listen while Keegan processes a bird. Just do this proper leg measurement, huh? Yeah? Just fine. Zero nine nine. Light breast and nut hatch. Looking very uh, male to me. Must be the uh, ones that they don't close. Zero CP, zero BP. Let's go one fat. Three body molt. No flight feather moment. Flight feather where looks like zero. Ring tail. Yes, please. Wing is eighty nine. Tail. Forty-six. Mass? Yes, please. Let's fucking get another two. Do you have my good one B? We done any bluebirds here today? Nineteen point five. And that is bird banding. During our fall banding, we normally catch and band over fifty birds a morning. Our work aims to build a better understanding of how our local and migrating birds are doing. Now it is your turn. When you can, get outside, look around, and listen. Once you start to pay attention to these wonderful neighbors, you will see that they are everywhere you go.